Well, it's October and I'm thinking about the rut. And with the rut become all phases of the rut where we have the pre-rut, the rut lockdown, the peak rut, post rut. You have all these rutting periods, you have all the signing periods that come before that, the signing phase. And it's that entire buildup. And I wanted to talk about today, not just the pre-rut, another video that we shot today, but the rut lockdown and what that really means for you. The rut lockdown is, a, is an interesting time of the year that I think uh, confuses a lot of people. And if you think about it, the does are building up to that period of estrus. You have a few trickling in. Now, if you're further south, you have a lot more trickling in. Think about the rutting period and how short it is in the north. If fawns are born early in snow in April or early May in the UP of Michigan, northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, they die. If fawns are born late and they don't have that body size, if they're carrying spots going into October, they're not going to make it through a harsh northern winter, whether it's cold temperatures, deep snow, or both, they're in big trouble. And so as you go further north, there's a shorter rutting period uh, from primary rut to secondary rut, and there's a more enhanced secondary rut. And when you go down to Alabama, Georgia, Florida, you could have a trickle rut that lasts for four or five months because again, if fawns are born early, they still live. If they're born late, they still live because the conditions are not harsh. Well, smack dab in the middle of all that rut and those rutting conditions is the post rut. And I brought a couple of these. I just wanted to show, these are some replicas of some giant bucks. I wish I knew the last name of the person that shot this buck in Kentucky, but this is a typical buck that scores right around 200. It was actually shot on public land and it scores right around 200 as a typical buck and uh, it's only a three-year-old you can tell i mean look at the how thin the antlers are the rack it grew into a big rack but very thin and uh just a three and a half year old buck they said it was 135 pound dressed weight body i believe was what it was now this tanker right here i can imagine was not a 135 pound dressed buck i'm sure this was well into the 200s and this is the Jim Jordan buck, uh, famous buck that goes all the way back. It was shot in 2014, or 1914, September 20th. It scored 206 and an eighth. So for a long time, it was the number one typical buck um, in the entire world. And uh, so pretty awesome buck. And it shot long ago, of course, just a replica. But whether you're after these bucks, or whatever box you're going for. I'm unfortunately not going for any box that are this large this year, but something happens as we transition through the October lull into the signing phase where bucks start laying down a lot of sign rubs and scrapes in the woods, but they're not actually traveling between bedding areas. You can't really hunt them in the morning yet. And then we get slammed into the pre-rut. There's a lot of buck activity, especially those mature core bucks like these. They would have been laying down a lot of rubs and scrapes. They know the game. If you have young bucks on your land, you might not see a lot of pre-rut activity. There's some incredible morning activity. That's when I'm shooting half of my mature bucks throughout the years, getting next to a bedding area in the morning, waiting for those deer to come back because they're active in the morning at that time of the year. Then all of a sudden something happens. You had that trickle of some does coming into estrus and then a pretty high percentage of does are coming into estrus. Think about it as, uh, and you know, I don't want to digress too much, but if you're guys, you're going to, into a bar and you have five guys going in and there's 20, 20 ladies at the bar that you might want to talk to, those are pretty good odds, right? Well, think about that rut lockdown that every buck has a doe and they don't need to look for very many Every buck gets invited to the party. It doesn't matter if they're young and they're locked down for a little while on those first does. Again, every buck can find a doe pretty easily. It's not that all the does are coming into estrus. In fact, it's, it's that first buildup of the estrus period in the primary rut where you just have a high percentage and enough bucks to breed them. And there's an oversaturation of does coming into estrus. And so those bucks get on them, they're locked down. It takes a few days for those bucks to get off those does and go look for more. But during that time for three or four days, and let's say that's the first four days of, of November in Wisconsin, same with Michigan, Minnesota. Maybe that's days four, five, and six, seventh of November in Southern Ohio, Northern, Ohio, Northern Kentucky, over into Tennessee, over into Missouri, Iowa. And you might be able to flip that back a little bit further into Kansas and over into Alabama, Louisiana. And then you get those random trickle dates of does coming into estrus in the south, and that's always hard to predict. Rut lockdown phase is real, 
and you might notice people will say a lot of times, the rut just hasn't happened in my area. Well, you probably don't realize the bucks are in lockdown. Pre-rut actually started 10 days earlier. And if you're waiting for the rut to begin, you're gonna be really off on how you should hunt and your expectations because we're in the middle of the entire rut when you look at all those phases, not the beginning, we're not waiting for it to begin. And if you realize that, it'll help you with your hunting strategy. What I like doing during the, during the rut lockdown phase is I'm focusing on those transition areas in between bedding areas where I think that a mature buck might take a doe back to this little corner of the woods. He's breeding her, he's fighting off other bucks. As soon as they're done, he's releasing looking for another one. Well, he's typically not traveling out through the open ag fields or in open hardwoods. He's scouting for those doe bedding areas. And a lot of times those transitions between doe bedding areas and food sources are where I like to look for that perfect rut lockdown phase because you never know when a buck's going to be coming off of that doe and looking for more. What I find that's interesting during this period, there's a lot of competition. So you might see a mature buck that's going out into that food source and a food plot or an ag field where there's 20 does and you think, well, there's a lot of does, I'm gonna find a big buck that's going out there. I think that buck, for me personally, he'd rather go off to this corner over there where there's a couple of hidden does and fawns, has his do those does for himself, he finds them, he's smart enough to know where those little pockets are. And that's why I like hunting a lot of transition areas between feeding and bedding or on bedding areas in the morning between that major X movement in the afternoon, always looking for that doe that's going to come off or that buck that's going to come off that last doe and searching for his another, for, for another doe, his next one, and move on to the, the primary rut. So really look for this period of time in that rut lockdown. We're trying to come out with this video about 10 days before that time so you can plan. And so you're really trying to recognize these different phases. And like I talk about with the pre-rut beginning, one of the ways you can tell when the pre-rut begins is if you have water in your area, Bucks will consistently hit water in the afternoon all year long, but especially during the summertime. They're sitting dry all day eating twigs, acorns, hardwood regeneration, woody shrub tips, briars, dry matter that's hard to digest. First thing you want to do is hit water on the way to their evening food source, but once they feed on green all night, they don't need to hit that water in the morning. They're back to their bedding areas. Once you see bucks, hitting water sources at 10 in the morning, two in the afternoon, middle of the day, you know the pre-rut is on. That's one of the surest signs. We see that taking place almost, place almost to the day in Wisconsin around October 22nd, the 20th, somewhere around there every year. Something interesting about that is they're hitting those water sources when it's cold, not really hot. You'd think they're thirsty because it's really hot, but because it's 80 degrees on October 22nd, they're not leaving their bedding areas. They don't need to take a drink, they're not moving. Once that temperature drops and you have those major cold fronts coming through that we predict with HuntCast, they're getting down into that 30 degree range, 50 degree range, whatever that temperature drop brings that final temperature to, then those bucks are moving, they're cruising. Because of that, they build up a thirst. They're going to hit those water holes during the middle of the day, and that's exactly when that, when that, uh, that pre-rut's going to begin. You can also watch the mock scrapes that we have. You can watch those mock scrapes. You can see the activity levels. You can see the activity levels in the morning. You can see when that's beginning and that'll tell you when that pre-rut begins. And rest assured, within about a week, that rut lockdown's gonna take place when those does and estrus are starting to pick up. And you can look around the room right here. We're in an incredible spot in Kentucky here, down here hunting with the HuntWise crew. And you can see some of these monster bucks on the wall right here. You can even see Mitch right here. Mitch is sitting here. Say hi, Mitch. Oh, <laughs> he works with Crispy from Crispy Archery. He's his uh, videography, travels around with him, so he's here with us. Uh, to film to this this time and uh, we're at a beautiful hunting lodge down here and we're dreaming about the rut because we're still a couple weeks away we're looking for those evening food source movements right now but as soon as that pre-rut begins we're going to hit those morning stands and you can bet we're going to continue those morning stands and hitting those transition areas for that rut lockdown phases and through the peak rut and post rut it's just about to begin follow these uh, rut lockdown phase uh, tips as you go into the season plan for it plan we're going to sit Map out your rut, your entire rut of three to three and a half weeks. Know where you're gonna sit for each phase. We'll help you with that. And uh, you can have a great rut this fall. You don't have to put all your eggs in, the ba in one basket and go into your favorite stand and blow it out and ruin the rest of the rut. The rut's a marathon, not a sprint. Hunt it like that and you're gonna find great success in the whitetail rut woods this fall. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, you're obviously interested in whitetail habitat solutions, what I have to teach, and you will love 
my new web class series. The first one is how to design your whitetail property. It's out now. The link is in the description. I invite you to check it out. It's on my website. Can't wait to hear about it.